My mother is a big horror fan, meaning that I grew up watching endless horror films of all sorts. I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, and honestly and perhaps somewhat sadly, I'm rarely shocked in a good way by horror films. I either know going in that it's going to be something I'll enjoy, and I do, or I expect it'll be crap and then it is. But surprisingly enough, this week's film is one that did surprise me in a good way. Let's take a look at Vanished, Girl in the Woods, and how this cheap film actually manages to both tell a great story and be scary at the same time. I went into this movie not knowing a single thing about it, and honestly, I recommend you do the same. I'll leave a link in the comments if you want to watch this film for yourself first, which really is the best way to experience it. But if you've already seen the film, or don't care about getting spoiled a bit, then let's keep going. Vanished came out in 2011, and in Japanese it's known as Nanatsu Made wa Kami no Uchi. This is a saying in Japanese and explains the plot a lot better than the English title. I've actually spoken about this saying on the channel before, but in essence it means that children belong to the gods until the age of seven. This is a saying that came around because, long ago, it wasn't uncommon for kids to not reach eight years old due to a variety of factors, and so it was thought that they were being taken back to live with the Kamisama on the other side. This plays into the plot of this movie in several ways. First, we have Sakura, daughter of Mana and Makoto. Mana is a religious woman who loves her daughter fiercely, and when Sakura was just a baby, she almost went missing, an event that terrified her mother. Then, when she turns seven, she does go missing for real, and this time around, it breaks her. Mana loses not just her child, but her faith as well. Meanwhile, we have Mayu, a 17-year-old high school girl, who is extremely reclusive and attends church with her father each week, seeking redemption and forgiveness for something. She seems to fear other kids her age, and although her father strives to help her, he just isn't sure what to do. When they head out to rent a video one day, the store clerk notices the cuts on Mayu's wrist, and she runs outside in shame. There, she discovers a kidnapped girl in a white van, but the owner soon arrives and she's unable to do anything. Terrified, she prays, but the van leaves without noticing her. Mayu and her father follow the van into a forest, and before long, the kidnapped girl falls out the back. Mayu gets out to help the girl while her father says he'll follow the van. Bad decisions are made all around and, of course, nobody has any reception because it's 2011 and they're in the woods. Probably the most realistic part of the movie for me as someone who worked in the Japanese countryside at this exact same time and struggled to get reception even in my civilized school building. Anyway, this all goes pretty much as you'd expect it to, meaning not well. Turns out Mayu knows whoever this girl is, but now they've both been captured. This cuts with scenes of Mana and Sakura as she also goes missing. And then, another girl by the name of Kaoru who's babysitting her young cousin. There's a creepy-ass doll in his house that freaks her out and, shockingly, when she talks to her aunt about this on the phone, turns out they don't have any such doll. Oh. Well then, guess it's time for Kaoru to disappear as well. And if you have sharp eyes, you'll likely have noticed at this point that Kaoru looks suspiciously like the girl from the van. Hmm. Finally, we're introduced to our last main character, Dana, who is played by one of my favourite actresses, Asuka Rin. There's a bit of deception here, as we're informed of a legend of something called Tengu Dok that makes people disappear, including yet another girl right as she's talking to Dana. But in the end, it turns out that Dana is an actress and was just filming a bit for a movie. If you have a sharp memory, then you'll remember that Mayu was looking at a film cover at the start of the movie that had Dana on it, and 
spoke as if she knew her. Hmm. A crew member outside tries, badly, to hit on Nana, and then tells her a story about how an elementary school student disappeared in the forest outside the school they're filming in a while back. Nana really doesn't want to walk through it, but it's the only way to reach the station, so she reluctantly does. We're given hints that Nana can perhaps see the other side, and in the end, she finds herself back at the school again, and thus is forced to spend the night there. There's a reason I'm describing all of this, and it's not just to sum up the plot. This film isn't very long, it's only 80 minutes, making it a rather quick film, and literally the first half of it is, in essence, set up. Well, maybe set up isn't the best way to describe it, but the four separate plot threads all finally meet around the 50 minute mark, and until that point, you're led to believe that all of these things are happening in chronological order, and they're more random than they seem. Naturally, they're not. I'm not going to lie, I was confused for much of the start of this film. I wasn't sure if it was a deliberate choice or if I had missed something, but it was clear the film was setting something up with all these separate plot threads and, at some point, they would obviously meet. But I struggled to figure out what exactly was going on and how everyone related to each other. This wasn't a bad thing though. On the contrary, it kept me watching so I could figure it out and it wasn't like these separate threads were just boring setup either. The scenes with Kaoru and the doll, for example, had some genuinely great scares. There are scenes with Nena in the school that were massively unsettling and had me on the edge of my seat waiting to see what would happen as well. At this point, again, I'd like to point out that this is very clearly a cheap film, and according to the director, it was filmed in only nine days. It also features a rather small cast of roughly eight people, and of those, a few come and go rather quickly. The director was also the writer, and the end credits are over in a snap. Not a lot of people worked on this film, but that doesn't make it bad. Oh no. The writer and director, Miyake Ryuta, is no chump when it comes to horror. When Mayu is in the video store, you see a bunch of horror DVDs that are all his actual works, and he has worked on many famous horror works, such as Tales of Terror from Tokyo, Honto ni atta kowai hanashi, Gakko no kaidan, Juwon, Shin Mimi Bukuro, and more. It's a champion's list of the exact type of horror this movie is trying to be. Something small, contained, cheap, and most of all, scary. You could probably call this film a mystery first and foremost due to the way it's set out, but it's most definitely a horror as well. I'm a jaded old lady, but there were a few moments in this that actually made my skin crawl with that uncomfortable feeling of, oh no, I don't like this at all. This isn't the scariest movie you're ever gonna see, far from it. It's also not the best acted, nor visually the most pleasing to the eye either. It's a cheap film that was made in just over a week. You're going to get the quality you expect from that. But if you're a fan of this type of raw horror that Japan likes so much, the cheap budget stuff that focuses on a small story with a few characters in one or two locations, then you'll undoubtedly enjoy this film. And yes, it does all come together perfectly by the end. So much so that it warrants a second viewing so you can see all the seeds that were sown at the start of the film and how brazen they were with some things that you wouldn't realise were important until much later in the film. I won't spoil how it ends here though, go and watch it for yourself, it's much better that way. I looked at reviews after watching to see what other people thought and there's certainly a mix. A common complaint I've seen is that the characters, particularly at the start, acted rather stupidly by not calling the police when following the van, but this is a fairly standard horror trope that didn't even stand out to me, so whether that upsets you or not is up to your own tastes. 
I don't think it's that uncommon for people in a stressful situation to not even consider what would otherwise seem obvious, so it personally didn't bother me that much. There were also complaints about how the first half of the movie seemed to jump around all over the place, but again, that was a pro for me, not a con. Again, up to your own taste whether you enjoy that type of storytelling or not, but it was done deliberately and for a very good reason. If the film had been told in a traditional way, then quite frankly, it just wouldn't have worked. And like I said, it does all come together in the end and gets wrapped up with a neat little bow, so it's not like it's obtuse just for the sake of it. Literally everything is explained and it's made apparent why the story was told that way. If anything, I'd say my one complaint and something that actually confused me a little was that Asuka Lin looks so much older than the other two leads, who are all supposed to be the same age in the film. In reality, Lin was 20 when this film was made, while the other actresses were 16 and 17. It's not a massive difference, but the other actresses looked quite a bit younger already, like young teens, while Lin looked to be in her early 20s, as she was. So I was a little confused about the already confusing timelines for that reason. But I'll forgive it because it's Lin, and I'd much rather her there than not. All in all, I highly recommend this film, and going in not knowing a single thing about it is absolutely the best way to experience it, if you can. In the end, the way the story was told and some genuine frights scattered throughout served to elevate the film above its clearly low budget and extremely quick filming time. Is it the best film you're ever going to see? Hell no. Is it for everyone? Again, absolutely not. But if you like the Honto Niata style of horror, the cheap and somewhat raw Tales of Terror style stories that this director is so good at, then you'll no doubt enjoy this one as well. But what do you guys think? Have you seen Vanished, Girl in the Woods? Let me know what you thought in the comments below, or go and watch it now, and then come back and let me know what you thought. Until then, stay safe and I'll see you guys again next time.